All right, guys, this is going to be an extremely brief um, overview of photosynthesis, just the very, very basics. You should watch the worksheet on cell respiration and photosynthesis also, which gave you sort of an overview of the two. So the first thing I wanted to show you was a little bit about stomata. How do plants get the carbon dioxide for photosynthesis? They have to absorb it through stomata, which are pores, and they're usually on the underside of the leaf because whenever these pores open, What's going to happen is something called transpiration. This is the pore, and it's a hole. And what's going to happen is <clears throat> oxygen or carbon dioxide, um, yes, will come in. Our gas exchange can happen. But the other thing that's going to happen is water loss. So the plants are constantly taking in water at the roots, um, and water, but but water's evaporating at the stomata. Uh, this little picture here I found online, which is kind of interesting. This is showing how. Normally, the stomata would be mostly open during the day when the sun is out, which makes sense because the light reactions and the dark reactions, even though they're called dark reactions, happen at the same time. So photosynthesis is happening. The stomata need to be open to bring in the carbon dioxide to incorporate into the sugar. There's not really any reason for them to be open if there's no photosynthesis going on until you see them closed here. Okay, uh, what causes them to open and close? Well, I'm not going to get into detail, but basically when water flows into these guard cells, you imagine these, there's your pore in the middle. When water flows in, they literally bow open. Like when you blow up a bow, uh, one of those long balloons that the clowns make into a, to uh, you know, a animal or whatever, they sort of bow when they get full. So this actually opens up. When water leaves, they actually collapse. Now that's controlled by potassium. So remember the sodium potassium pump, potassium actually plays a role in uh, water either flowing into the stomata or flowing out. I don't think you need the details, you can always look it up, but I just wanted to show you guard cells, when these are full, they're open, and when the water leaves, they're closed. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the Calvin cycle. It's also called carbon fixation because carbon is being fixed or incorporated into glucose. And what's gonna happen here, one of the important steps, there's a whole bunch of steps, it's a cycle. But the bottom line is there's a particular enzyme called Rubisco, that's the nickname for it. And it's really important in this cycle because it actually takes the carbon dioxide and makes it into this compound. Bottom line is, there's a three carbon compound that's a step in the, in the process. And so sometimes this is called C3 photosynthesis, just like the citric acid cycle gets its name because one of the things in there in the steps is citric acid. One of the steps in this cycle makes a three carbon compound. So it's called C3 photosynthesis. Why do we mention this one enzyme Rubisco? Because this enzyme is actually a bit of a problem. Um, the cycle turns six times, you get six, CO, or six CO2s go in, and we get our sugar. Here's a picture showing it. You don't have to know all the parts of it. Generally, six carbon dioxides go in, and we end up with glucose. All right, so here's the problem, photorespiration. So that enzyme I told you about, Rubisco, it's supposed to attach to carbon dioxide and take it to the next step in the cycle. Unfortunately, Rubisco is also attracted to oxygen, sort of like competitive inhibition. It's an enzyme, but it's, it's attracted to two things that can fit its active site. So why is this a problem? Well, if there's a lot of oxygen in the environment, that means that it's gonna basically attach to oxygen more of the time than attaches to the carbon dioxide. And so what's gonna end up happening um, is that you're not gonna have any photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide's not gonna get incorporated. You're not gonna make any sugar. And so it's called photorespiration because it's taking in oxygen instead. All right, so this is an issue. Here's a picture of it. Here's um, what can happen if it picks up CO2, you see it at the top. Do you have to see, the, know these pictures? No, if it picks up oxygen, it goes to the bottom. Bottom line, if it picks up oxygen, we have a problem. All right, so um, there's two solutions. This is the main solution, it's called C4. And just like it sounds like, it's called C4 because before the Calvin cycle, instead of being becoming a, a three carbon compound, it turns it into a four carbon compound first. The Calvin cycle still happens. Um, PEP carboxylase, a different enzyme, is involved in making that four carbon compound. It stands for phosphoenyl pyruvate. Not important. Um, bottom line, what it does is it is not attracted to oxygen. So there's no competition. It picks up the CO2 and it takes it to another area where the Calvin cycle can happen. But the Calvin cycle is now happening further away um, in an inner cell. I think I have a picture here. So here's what's going to happen. So here at the bottom, 
can't draw on this. Um, but at the bottom, you're seeing airspace. Um, and the airspace here is where basically the carbon dioxide and oxygen both could be coming in. But since PEP carboxylase is not attracted to oxygen, there's no problem. And then what's going to happen is it's going to go across over here to the Calvin cycle in an inner portion of the leaf where there is no oxygen and so now there's no problem with competition. So it's basically an extra step and it prevents photorespiration. The carbon dioxide is picked up by an enzyme that's not attracted to oxygen and carried to an inner portion of the leaf where that chloroplast is not exposed to oxygen, so there's no, there's no problem. All right, so why is this adaptive? Obviously, if there's a lot of uh, oxygen, there's going to be a problem with the other type. And also, this, um, this doesn't need it to keep his, the stomata open for as long a period of time. So there's, there's adaptive values to it. Not every plant does this. Certain plants in high oxygen environments do this. Um, so, but, so you should know what C4 is in general. Um, corn is an example, annual plants. I don't think they would ask you to memorize any of that. All right, um, here's another picture of it. So here's the CO2 on the left coming in. Oxygen can come in too, but this is not attracted um, to oxygen, so it's not a problem. Carries it over to an inner portion of the leaf where the Calvin cycle takes over. All right, the other one is called CAM. It stands for Crassulation Acid Metabolism, and CAM is something that only happens in desert plants. And this is really interesting. Normally, what's going to happen is that carbon dioxide has to come in at the same time that the light reactions are occurring because photosynthesis can only happen during the day. A plant can't store it. But these special plants have the ability to take in their carbon dioxide at night. Therefore, the stomata don't have to open in the day when it's the hottest and the brightest and the most water is going to evaporate. They open their stomata at night, take in the carbon dioxide, and then store it until the daytime. Then during the day, they can actually turn it back into carbon dioxide and then do their photosynthesis uh, just like normal plants. So think of it as if you could do all your breathing at night and then go throughout your day without breathing because you've already stored up all the oxygen you need for the day. And why do they want to do this? Because every time they open their stomata, they lose water. They're going to lose a lot less water at night when it's not as hot and the sun's not shining down on them. And, uh, and that's it. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an overview, a very watered down overview of photosynthesis and particularly modifications in photosynthesis. And um, that's it. So good luck, guys. I hope you're studying.